G'day from Australia. I'd just like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land from which I'm broadcasting this live stream. I'd also like to pay my respects to Elders past and present. My name's Ashley Davis. Welcome to my home office. And uh, today I'm doing my first off-the-cuff coding live stream. Uh, very exciting. Uh, I'm going to be live streaming the development of my Visual Studio Code extension. Uh, it's a Kanban board extension. It's basically to make a Trello board that runs in Visual Studio Code. I've already been working on this project for probably about a month now and I've been tweeting about it. Um, all that has just been prototyping, answering questions, um, getting answers, you know, understanding whether this project is feasible or not. So that's, that's out of the way now and I'm actually ready to commit to developing this. And it was a lot of work, um, even though I was only working on it in 30 minute sessions, it would end up taking a lot of work actually tweeting about it because I wanted to keep everyone up to date. So instead of tweeting about it while I'm coding, I've decided to live stream it. <clears throat> so this is the first in a series of, of streams that I'm going to do on this project. Um, we're going to be building this Visual Studio Code extension. Um, you're going to learn about React. You're going to learn about working with JavaScript and TypeScript. You're going to learn about test-driven development and Jest. <clears throat> um, today I'll just be giving a project overview and then we'll be getting started with a bit of TDD in, in Jest. Um, aiming for about 30 minutes, we might go a bit longer, we'll see. Um, as I said, this is the basically the first time I've done this, so uh, who knows where it's going to go. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do my best to explain uh, what I'm doing while I'm coding and, and why I'm doing it. Please feel free to ask questions in the chat, I'll look at that every so often to find out what's happening there. <clears throat> and uh, please feel free to, to tweet to me on Twitter as well. My, my Twitter handle is AshleyDavis75. <clears throat> now we'll get started. So this is the, the code repository for the example project or for the, for, the, for the prototype that I've been working on. And this is what we're going to evolve into the proper Visual Studio Code extension. I'll... I'll I'm going, to, I'm going to give you an overview in a moment of, of how this came about and where this came from. Um, but just now, if you, if you want to know what we're working with, it's, uh, it's on my GitHub, Ashley Davis, uh, Taskboard VS Code Extension. You know, you can come here and you can clone this, um, or you can download a zip file if you want to follow along. You know, you may not be able to follow along in the live stream, but I am recording this and I am going to put it on YouTube later. So you might be able to kind of come back and, and follow along later if you want to do that. Uh, there's instructions here for how to get it running. We're going to go through all that in a moment. So, uh, I'll, well, I'm going to give you a demo. I'm going to give you a demo to start with. I've already got a copy of the code locally. So I'm just going to start Visual Studio Code on this project. I'm working on Windows 10 here, by the way. Um, but most of what I show you is going to work on Linux or Mac OS. You know, you might have to change a few commands here and there. I actually have um, Git Bash installed on Windows, so I've got access to all the Linux commands under Windows, which is really handy. <clears throat> okay, so this is the, the code repo we're going to be working with. I've got it all set up so that I can hit uh, F F5 here, and that's going to debug or load an extra copy of Visual Studio so that we can load the extension and debug it. Now this is just, um, internally it's got like a web UI and this is just using uh, Webpack to build that before it runs it. Here we go. Cool. Um, so this is just um, opened a separate project. It's my, it's, a, it's an open source project of mine. The particular project doesn't matter. It's Grademark. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the Kanban board. So this is the extension that I'm building. Fingers crossed this works. Of course it doesn't. I did not pray to the demo gods. Let's try that again. That is so weird. I literally tested this just a minute ago. So this is, like I said, this is a prototype. 
pretty pretty hack and slash coding to put this together. So uh, can't be surprised if it doesn't work <laughs> sometimes. All right, so we have to get into some debugging straight away. I, I was hoping we wouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to have a quick look at uh, the developer tools in Visual Studio Code to see if there's any errors. There's a bunch of errors here, but I, but I actually think these are from... There's, there's the error from the Kanban board. Now, there's a bunch of other errors here as well, but they're from other plugins, so they're not something I need to worry about. What I'm just going to do is clear that developer tools. I'm going to try opening this thing again. Hmm. There's something wrong in this function on did change notification. But I'm not sure how to tell what that is from this error log. Ah, oh, magic, it worked. For some reason, it, maybe it's because I didn't have a, a markdown file selected there. Okay, so as you can see, there's plenty of things that have to be fixed you know, as we work through this project. I'm just going to drag this off to the side there. And I will close down the sidebar here for the moment, just so we can see how this works. So, I've opened this on a markdown file. Um, when you when you when you change to a mark markdown file that conforms to the format, it's going to load it up in the Kanban board. You can see here that we've got this uh, this task here, fix the home page. It's uh, at the top of our to do list here. Um, what I can do here, um, what I've already got working in the prototype, is I can drag that down, and you can see over here now that task has changed to to be at the bottom of the to do list. So th this is like a taster of kind of where I'm going with this extension. Um, it's going to allow you to have your task lists co-located in your code repository with your project and then edit them using a Trello style Kanban board. So I just wanted to give you a quick demo of where the prototype um, is at. Um, and, and now we're going to do a bit of a project overview. I'll explain where this came from um, and I'll explain where it's going and, uh, and what we're going to do today. So, as I said, this is the repo. Uh, feel free to grab the code. I'm going to show you how to do that actually in a moment. Now, this all started a couple of months ago when I discovered this thing called Foam. Now, Foam is a, a suite of plugins for Visual Studio Code that's going to help you do note taking. Like, basically, I've used it to create my own knowledge base, my own, my own personal wiki. Um, it's all based on markdown files, and you can have linking with them. And I don't even know all the awesome things you can do with this because there's just so much here. Um, it comes with so many um, so many different plugins from different people. Um, it gives you like this awesome kind of view of all the links between all your notes. Once I discovered this, like I really wanted to move all my note taking into Foam. Um, and I've got a load of places where I do that like Google Docs, um, Trello, obviously, uh, Workflowy, you know, just text files, markdown files. They're all over the place. So I wanted to consolidate kind of my knowledge base and, and all the to-do lists basically for my projects into one code repository. Um, so I've got a lot of I've got a lot of tasks lists for, for various projects in, in Trello. And so what I wanted was I wanted to you know basically have a, a Trello board in in Visual Studio Code where I could edit uh, markdown files. Like th this is what it is is a Kanban board. So um, I've got some links open here. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Kanban boards, if you haven't heard of that before, have a look on Wikipedia. It explains what a Kanban board is um, and what Kanban, uh, how Kanban can be used in uh, organization and you know, uh, organizing a development team and a process. <clears throat> I, so I, I started doing research around this, this foam and, and how I could do this, and I've got a whole bunch of other ideas. You know, beyond these Trello boards, I've got a whole bunch of other ideas of how I want to improve Foam and how I want to use it. I found this, uh, this was really useful, um, todo.md, which is like a really simple format um, for creating to-do lists, um, basically task boards in 
uh, in Markdown files. Now, they, they link here to a Kanban board that, that is already like an extension in Visual Studio Code. So someone has already tried to do what I'm doing. Um, it, like I tried using that, um, it didn't seem to work very well. It didn't look like Trello. I just, I really wanted it to look like Trello. I mean, that's just silly, but I did. Um, anyway, um, I thought this was a good format to, to base it off. Um, I imagine other people are already using this. Um, you can see here that there's like a, like a Kanban board column here and a Kanban board column here and you get a bunch of um, tasks under each column. <clears throat> so that was really cool. And then I was like, like, you know, I, I really, you know, this could, this, this project for me could be a massive sidetrack and I already have too many projects. So I, I didn't want to actually go down the path of creating a UI for, um, for you know, for making it uh, a Kanban board. And so a quick Google and I, and I found one, I, you know, someone had already made um, React Trello. So I was like, you know, what, what, what more do I need to start on this project? Like it was, it was like it was meant to be. <clears throat> and they've got a really good um, storybook page here as well, where you can kind of play with it and you can, you can see all the different things it can do. Um, there seems to be one thing that it doesn't do, which is really weird that it's missing because it's really, really good uh, otherwise. You don't seem to be able to edit edit what's in a task. So, but you know, I figured I could probably fix that fairly easily, and maybe uh, submit a pull request, you know, back to this project. Or maybe you can do that. Maybe I, maybe I just don't know how to turn that that feature on, and so that's going to be a bit of a learning process figuring out if there's something that does that, or whether I need to kind of update this and submit a pull request. So that you know th that'll all be part of future future live streaming episodes. <clears throat> So I, I, I went into a prototyping phase. I, you know, I had a bunch of questions I wanted to ask, like how difficult is it to make a Visual Studio Code extension? You know, this this is this is built in React. This 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 board here is built in React. You know, can I put a React web application inside of a Visual Studio extension? And you know, and then I then I, I just wrote down all the questions. I, I wrote down all these detailed questions that I wanted to know you know, answers for, could this be done? How would I do it? You know, where's the information I need to do this? Um, and in a lot of cases, I, you know, I wrote little bits of code as well, just to kind of learn it and uh, figure out how it all fits together. Uh, I, I'm, by, I'm by no means an expert at any of this. I'm probably gonna make all sorts of weird mistakes and we're gonna figure this out uh, while I'm live streaming. So um, even though I've done a bit of work in prototyping, um, I'll, you know, I'll get to the limits of my knowledge pretty quickly. Anyway, um, this was a good web page to go to if you do want to write a Visual Studio extension. This uh, this your first extension page is really good. Uh, this will get you started making a basic extension with a with a command that you can execute. Uh, it doesn't do much, but it's just a great a great little introduction. Um, it shows you how to debug your extension in Visual Studio Code, which is always helpful. So once I got beyond that, um, I was like. Okay, so, but I still need to be able to put a web app. I still need to be able to put a web app in, in my extension. How am I going to do that? Uh, and that's where I found uh, the information on the WebView API. So that basically, a WebView is what allows you to embed a web application within Visual Studio Code. Um, it says think of it as, a, as an iframe. So it's basically putting it, you know, in, embedding a web page within a web page effectively because Visual Studio Code, of course, is, all, is built on Electron and, and it's all built using web technologies. So I went through this. Uh, I learned a bit about uh, making uh, an extension with a web view, and and I, I built their example here, and I had the cat coding. Uh, do they show you it here? I thought that might be an animation, but it doesn't seem to be. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So I mean, they they, they give you this fun little extension that's got um, like an animated GIF of a cat doing coding, which is quite amusing to watch. Um, so I got that all working. Had to play with that. That was all good. Um, but I'm still like, like, how do I get React in here? Like, like it seemed like it was going to be a big issue, like being able to build React and get it in, and you know, how do you communicate? Uh, and I didn't really want to have to go through all the learning, but but luckily I found that there was already a an example of how to do this. From uh, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. I'm going to say Mikhail Agutu. Hope I got that right. Um, so this is an example of a Visual Studio Code extension that has react a react web application running in it 
So you can clone this. Um, it's got some instructions down here on how to debug it, how to run the React Web UI by itself. Um, I, like I, this was a great start, and, and I'm so happy that I found this because it would have required a lot of learning to figure out how to do all this stuff. Um, so I'm really, really happy that I got this, and, and it's a huge head start for me on this project. Um, so I want to say a big thank you to Mikhail for, for actually putting this up. That said, there's some stuff in there that I'm not... I'm not 100% happy about the structure of the code. You know, that's that's just normal for coding. It's not really, it's not a, it's not a criticism of Mikhail's code. But later on, we are going to refactor this code a little bit to to be into a structure um, how I'd like it to be, and uh, using a design pattern called dependency injection, so that I can. Well, I'm not going to give you any spoilers yet. We're going to come back to that in another uh, another stream in this series, and we're going to refactor this, and we're going to use dependency injection to clean it up a little bit. Now, the next piece of the puzzle in prototyping was how do, I, how do I convert this markdown file? How do I convert this into data that could be used by this Trello board? Um, so I, what I was looking for was a way to parse a markdown file and generate an abstract syntax tree. Now, if you haven't heard of that before, you know, it, it's just, um, here it is on Wikipedia, if you want to learn more about it. But, um, it's just a tree, you know, you basically, you parse a language like Markdown, you know, all compilers work this way, they, they par, you know, your JavaScript compiler, your C++ compiler, they, they parse your language into this tree-like structure that's called an abstract syntax tree. And it's a data structure then, it's not text, it's a data structure, so it's much easier to work with. So what I wanted to do, I didn't want to write a Markdown parser, you know, no, no one wants to do that. I wanted to find a Markdown parser that could generate a tree, and then I wanted to basically be able to restructure, rewrite that tree using my code into the Kanban board data that, that's acceptable for um, to work with that um, React Trello over here. <clears throat> so I need to get it basically into this board data format. Now, I also need to come back the other way. So I need to be able to take updated board data. So you, you, you've changed something. I, I need to be able to convert this back to Markdown. So I need to go in the reverse direction. So I continued my prototyping. I did prototyping uh, in Dataforge Notebook. I'll show you some results from that. <clears throat> so I tried two different parsing libraries. This is the one that I settled on, uh, Unified plus Remark. And basically, I, I the thing that I had to do was basically, um, you know, how, how do I parse it? And how do I get? How do I how do I parse it from Markdown to board data? And then how do I get it back to Markdown data after that? So I've got some code here that's kind of reading the to do MD. I've got some code here. Well, there was an error there, but I, I fixed that. So you, you'll see that running and working in a second. Um, here we're basically parsing the Markdown file content into the abstract syntax tree, and we're we're displaying that so we can visualize it. I'm just going to run this now, actually, so you can we can get rid of that error and you can see this. <coughs> This is just JavaScript code, by the way, uh, running in my product called DataForge Notebook. Uh, if you want to get DataForge Notebook, go to dataforgenotebook.com. Now you have to pay to get the pro version, but if you go down here um, and you sign up to my mailing list, you can um, you can get DataForge Notebook free. Uh, but you don't need to do it. Obviously, none of this depends on DataForge Notebook. That was just how I did my prototyping. You can see here I've displayed the uh, Markdown abstract syntax tree, and we can kind of play with that data here just to just to get an idea of what it looks like. You know, you can see we've got at the root of the tree here. It's got some children. Um, there's a heading, and then there's the the project description here. If we just if we just switch back to the actual Markdown, I'll show you. So you can see here the project description, and that has been translated through here in the heading. After the heading is a paragraph, uh, what is that? Oh, this this is a completely different um, example to the one that we're looking at here anyway. Um, but I, I can show you that. So I just need to find my example to do data here. Here it is. Okay, so here we go. 
Um, so this is what we're looking at here. I'm just trying to find the, the actual columns. Oh, here, here we go. So here's the heading of the to-do column. So that's this to-do column here. And underneath that, there's all the all the structure for uh, all the all the tasks and the text underneath that. Uh, each one, each task or each card is a list item. If we scroll down further, we can find the other one. Hopefully, oh yeah, in progress. So here's the in progress column. That's here. So you can kind of see how that's done a lot of the hard work for us. It's basically parsed this markdown file into an abstract syntax tree. And we can we can now write code that depends on this. And uh, you can see here is where I'm converting it back. So this again, this is just to prove that I can do this uh, and to understand have some have some code that I can then kind of move into my project and actually use it for real. Uh, so here, what we're doing is we're taking the Markdown abstract syntax tree, we're passing it back through this processor, and we're getting serialized Markdown back. And I'm just displaying the text here for that markdown so you can see that here just to see that it comes out the same as what it went in <clears throat> so this is one part of the prototyping the other part was you know how do I get this into board data how do I how do I convert this abstract syntax tree into something I can plug into the the react Trello Kanban board so this this notebook here was my attempt to prototype that um, and, and is what I've used you know, in, in the actual uh, extension to, to do this. So this part here, this is where we're kind of reading in a markdown file, the same, the same one we just looked at. We're getting the abstract syntax tree. We're visualizing the abstract syntax tree here just to check that it's okay. And here's my function that I prototyped to convert the markdown AST to uh, a Kanban board. So here we're, we're, we're passing in raw markdown we're converting it to an AST, and then there's some really kind of funky code here to, to convert it to board data. Um, this is this is the code actually that I want to. This is the, the first thing that I want to do is is rebuild this code using test driven development. Now, obviously, the reason I I didn't do that in the first place is because I didn't know whether this project was feasible. I didn't know whether I wanted to invest my time in test driven development because it. You know, while test-driven de development is fantastic for making long-term maintainable code, um, I didn't know if I wanted to do that yet. So I didn't do test-driven development yet because it could have been a waste of time. Um, but this is this this is the kind of code that that can really do with test-driven development because already this code is complicated and messy and like and I've just hacked it together. I like it doesn't handle errors. It, there's probably lots of edge cases it doesn't handle. I know that there's going to be problems with it. Um, and it's the kind of complicated code that's really, really going to benefit from from being test driven development. So, I'm actually we're actually really running out of time in this session already. I didn't even think this would take this long to get here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to gut this function and rebuild it using test driven development. I'm not going to be able to. I'm, I'm barely going to be able to start that in this session because we're running out of time. But um, you, you'll you'll see that we'll, we'll get to a starting point for that. And in the next session, I'll actually start writing the tests. I think. So there's there's code down here to kind of test that that uh, markdown to board function that I prototyped, and to be able to visualize the result um, and see what you get from it. So that's where I got to with the the prototyping. What else can I show you? So I think. I think that's all I need to show you from that point of view. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to grab the code fresh now. So if you wanted to follow along, this is basically what you have to do. <clears throat> I'm going to clone it using Git. You probably, you probably want to fork your own copy and then clone it. Um, you can clone my code repository if you want, but you won't be able to push to it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy actually if other people want to contribute to this, but you're going to have to fork it first and then clone it. All I need to do myself is clone it. Um, I'm going to clone it 
into a separate directory because I've, I've already got a copy of the code and I'm only really doing this just to show you how to do it. So I'm going to call it extension 2 or maybe extension extension working. So I'm, I'm, I'm creating a separate copy of the code just to show you how to clone it, just to show you how to get into it. I'm going to close down the other Visual Studio I had open because I'm going to open this new project instead. So if you type code dot in the directory, it's going to open Visual Studio Code for this project. Now, um, my README here is just a cut down version of the original README in uh, Mikhail's original uh, code repository, which you can get to if you want to get to it. There's a link here to get to it. <clears throat> and there's just great instructions here on, on how to get set up. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, with any Node.js application is npm install. This gets all the dependencies. Hopefully that's not going to take too long. I, I am on mobile uh, Wi-Fi, by the way, because um, from out of my office, it's difficult to get, well, the, the Wi-Fi speed isn't that great. Now it's saying navigate down to React app and do an NPM install down there. So I'm going to do that. What's the next step? So then we just really have to run this. I'm not going to worry about that. I've already given you the demonstration of, of running this at the beginning of this uh, stream. So I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do next is I'm going to install Jest. And I'm just going to make sure that we can write like a really, really most basic test and that it can fail and that we can have it succeed. Um, and then that's going to be it for this session. Uh, I, I can't believe we've run out of time so quickly. But my, my plan for these streaming series is to just, just to work in 30 minute chunks and to stream it. Um, I think we've covered some good ground. I'm going to, I'm going to get this uh, video on YouTube afterwards so that you can watch it again later. So now I, I don't have any tests in this project yet and I don't have Jest. So I'm going to install it. I'm going to save it as a development de dependency. We don't need to have Jest uh, installed for production, obviously. So it's just going to be for um, development. I'm going to install the TypeScript types because I'm using TypeScript. Well, I'm using TypeScript in the extension. In the in the React code, that's still JavaScript. I would like to convert that to TypeScript. Um, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do that. That'll that'll be a future stream if I if I do that conversion to TypeScript. Um, that could be an interesting little uh, little session all of its own. Now, while Jest is installing, I'm just going to write my my first test. I'll create a test folder and I'll put it under there. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to call this function yet, but it's 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 basically a data converter. So uh, I'll just call my test converter .test .ts. Oh, well, how did I spell that? Converter. Convert that's a bit up. <clears throat> I might I might come up with a better name for this later. This could be a terrible name. <clears throat> so uh, I'm using I, I actually come before Jest. Oh, why is it doing that? Auto completion is not being my friend. There we go. I actually come from using uh, Mocha. So I, I've started using Jest on a couple of my open source projects. Um, but I, I still use Mocker on a whole bunch of them, so uh, you know I'm still using Mocker a lot. Uh, Mocker is an alternate test framework to Jest, like one that sort of came earlier, and it's still really good. Um, I, I'm still really happy with with Mocker, but Jest tend to has have has much better performance because it can run all of all, each test uh, in parallel in separate processes, so it can be a lot faster when you've got a bigger test suite. Uh, and also Jest, um, it has all the resources of Facebook behind it. So there's just so much you can do with Jest. Like I, I've barely scraped the surface of what you can do with Jest. Now I'm just going to test, check that it installed okay. Yep, it did. I'm going to put my first test here. But first I just want to add to package.json uh, uh, a test script. So I can, I'm just going to get rid of this pretest for now. Because I'm not worried about testing the React code. So that, that's equivalent to commenting that out. <clears throat> ah, what am I doing? 
So all I'm doing when I run the test command is I'm just going to run jest. So what that allows me to do is just to run npm test, which is a convention with Node.js. Um, if you know Node.js, you'll know this. But it, it's a convention uh, with npm, I should say, really, um, that's going to run your tests. And it doesn't matter whether you're using jest or mocker or how you've got it configured. You need to have your project set up by convention so that running npm test will just run whatever tests are in there. <clears throat> now, actually, let's just see what this does. I'm going to run npm test. I've got a, I've got an empty test, basically. Uh, I'm not really sure how jest is going to deal with that. It's got some sort of issue. <clears throat> Let me just check my TypeScript configuration. I think that's all good. Not sure why this wouldn't be working. Let's just let's just actually type in the test. Let's say expect true to be false. That's obviously a test that's going to fail. <clears throat> Jest encountered an unexpected token. Why doesn't it like my TypeScript? <clears throat> Let's see if it can handle JavaScript. It doesn't even like the JavaScript. I don't know why that is. I cannot use an import statement outside a module. I'm not even using an import statement as far as I know. <laughs> Everything looks okay there. I swore this was going to work. Um, have I got the right version of TypeScript? Yeah, I know. I know that Jess needs TypeScript 3.8 or above, so that's right. It's time to time to ask Dr. Google. I think. Let's let's see if Google can help us with this one. I'm just going to qualify TypeScript. Stack Overflow is my best friend. <laughs> it helps me through a lot of issues. The thing is that even though I've used uh, I've used Jest on a couple of projects now, it never, you know, it never just works, does it? Man, this looks like a way more complicated answer than I need. Hmm, maybe I need to make a jest config file. I, I sort of hope that uh, we wouldn't have to do that. I think I can do that with uh, jest init. So that's created uh, a jest configuration file. But I can't see it there. I don't know. I don't know where it's created it. Let's 
let's just ask Dr. Google again. How do we create a JS configuration file? Actually, it might be it might be just init with a with a dash. Oh yeah, that's it. Cool. Would you like to use TypeScript for this configuration file? Yep. No JS. Yep, that'll do fine. Coverage reports. Why not? What provider should you use to instrument code for coverage? I don't know. Let's just pick V8. Yep, I want to clear mock calls. Okay, cool. I've got a JS configuration file, and hopefully it's going to work with TypeScript. There's a lot of stuff here commented out. Probably don't need most of that. Well, set their testing environment to Node. I think that's okay. We we might have to tell it to have a, a TypeScript preset. I thought it would have put that in already. Or maybe you don't even need to do that anymore with um, with Jest. Okay, let's try this. TS node is required for TypeScript configuration files. Cool. I do like uh, I do like using that. Uh, TS node is a kind of like a replacement for Node, where where you can run TS node instead of Node, and then you can just use TypeScript files with Node. I didn't realize I was going to need this. Let's see how that goes. Fingers crossed. Ah, still got the same problem. Now I don't, I don't know if we need to have that. If that's just an old thing, like this is from last year. I mean, this is a failing test. It's just not the failing test I wanted to see. <laughs> There's just nothing here that makes me understand what the problem actually is. Okay, we're out of time, I think. Um, I mean, what I was hoping to do was to, to get to a, a broken test here, or a failing test, and then be able to fix it by making that true. At least that would be a starting point. That would be a good starting point. But there's clearly more to setting up Jest for TypeScript than I thought. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm a bit over time here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this offline, I'm gonna figure it out, and then in the next streaming session, I'm going to report back and told, tell you what it is that I did to get this working. And then we're going to be away and we're going to be testing using Jest. And, uh, and, and building the function, building the function which converts from markdown to board data and the function which, which kind of goes the other way as well, from board data back to markdown. So I'm going to be back here in a week, um, next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 9 a.m. on Friday in Brisbane Time, Australia. I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.